Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Off the Mat with Nicole Katz. We are um, doing another episode for our postnatal series that I'm so excited about. And today we have a woman who has been near and dear to my heart for a very long time. I have sent uh -huh. countless friends, family, and clients to see her. Um, really? Dr. Gabrielle Francis, the urban alchemist, um, who is with us. She has an office in New York and now works all all over the place also, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, and so she is with us today to talk about what it means to feed mama after baby comes um, in all of the ways and the importance of that and the spiritual side of that as well. So um, Dr. Francis, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nicole. It's so Great. wonderful to have you. Um, I'm honored to be here, honey. I'm so proud of everything you're doing and all the people you're helping. I'm so glad you're with us. And I, I, um, I should share that I've probably been seeing Dr. Francis for, I don't know, a very long time, maybe seven years. Yeah. And she helped me when it was challenging for us to become pregnant and throughout my pregnancy and certainly in the aftermath of um, having my first daughter gave me this perspective of just needing to refill my own tank even from um, a nutritional standpoint and so i'm really excited that she's here to talk to us about that today i remember when you said to me dr gabriel this concept of baby charging off of mom's batteries. Um, right. Will you speak a little bit to what that means and why it's important for mom postnatally? Of course, so one thing to think about is that the conversation really starts while you're pregnant and you wanna look at the mother's body as the garden that the mm -hmm. baby's growing in and mm -hmm. that's why you wanna have that garden first cleaned out, detoxed, and then filled with nutrients, organic nutrients, because that's the garden the baby's gonna grow in. But that's also the, her kind of platform of health that she moves into her life as a new mother with. So the, healthy, the healthier she is while she's pregnant, the healthier she's gonna be as a new mother, and also the healthier the baby. The other thing is that while a woman's pregnant, the baby is charging off of her battery and her gas tank. Mm -hmm. And so the battery and the gas tank are the adrenal glands and the thyroid. Mm -hmm. So throughout the whole pregnancy, the baby and the mom are charging off the same batteries and gas tank. And nature has it that the baby gets everything first. Right. So when a woman comes out of her birth, um, if her battery and gas tank weren't very charged very well, she's going to come out of that birth very depleted. So one of the most important things um, is to think about while she's pregnant, making sure the thyroid and the adrenal gland are in really good status. Right. And then when she becomes a new mom, she's less likely to have issues with recovering her weight issues with energy, sleep, and also postpartum depression. Um, so while she's pregnant, her body's surging with all these hormones, the baby's born, and that in itself was a, a big feat and an right. event in itself. Even yes. in a normal birth with no C-sections and no yes. complications, it's still That's a big a event. <laughs> yes. It's a marathon. And yes. so the baby comes out, they need all this care, the mother's depleted from the energy of the actual birth and then all of the nutrients that were taken from her while, the, while she was pregnant. And so a lot of women are coming into these, you know, the fourth trimester, as you're calling it, um, really depleted. And I, it's just the way Western medicine, they only look at the baby. Nobody looks at the mother. Right. And I just think that that's everything about that is wrong. This is, she's yes. responsible for this new life. Most women are just, they know how wonderful and happy they are that they have this baby, but, but a lot of them feel like absolute crap. Yeah. And then they feel like, oh my God, they feel guilty that they're overwhelmed and they're not able to enjoy this beautiful life before them because they are running on empty. Right. Yeah. But, and I know, think if we back up even a, a second, what you were describing as the, the garden that is ready to grow a baby 
in even non-COVID times, the reality or the likelihood that someone living in a city like New York or in any sort of a busy life had a perfectly tended, ready garden when baby came is unlikely. And in addition, a mom who was pregnant at all during what has been an unbelievable time for us in so many ways due to the pandemic and you know race relations and everything that's happening, there's got to be a depletion that needs to be addressed. So in the best case scenario, addressing mom is necessary. Now. <laughs> it's even more so. Right, I would say. And right? it's also, it's like a journey that starts with the fertility, goes through the pregnancy yeah. and into the new motherhood. So for women who aren't pregnant yet or who are thinking about it, you know, the more you're doing right. ahead of time, yeah. And carrying it all the way through is better. Now, anywhere you're at, if you're a new mom now and you've never done any things with nutrition or any of that to start, right. don't feel bad. You can right. start anywhere and you can rebuild from anywhere. But for those of the for those of you who know that this is on the on the plan, yeah. that's where you want to start as early as possible. Yeah. So if we're talking to a mom who has had her baby um, and is feeling, as you put it, like crap <laughs> um, and is wondering if perhaps it's time to give herself some attention. I know that I first or I came back to you after Isla was born and part of me was really frustrated because my biggest symptom that something was going on was that I just was not losing the baby weight, which was a goal of mine just because of what I do and, and who I am in my skin. Um, and the second that we looked at my thyroid, it became very clear that I needed support and getting that support changed everything for me. Um, and so what would, where, what are some starting well, you points? First consider what, what the, what's actually happening post birth. So while a woman is pregnant, her body's surging with progesterone and all these hormones and the baby's charging off the battery. The birth happens, there's a big surge in oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone, which is, you know, that happens as she passes through the vaginal canal and then while she's breastfeeding. So the oxytocin of breastfeeding and the actual birth experience is a, is a narcotic. So there's this underlying feeling of love and warmth and affection but sometimes that can mask this just giant drop in hormones that just happened. So the estrogen and progesterone really plummet. Often the thyroid and the adrenal, which are the gas tank and the battery are very depleted. And so she just feels like high and bonded and loving of the baby in one end, but actually really exhausted and depleted also. So it can be confusing, you right. know? And what if, um, as is the case very often, mom did not pass the baby through the birth canal vaginally and um, had a C-section for any number of reasons and or is not breastfeeding and so doesn't have that. I would imagine that also adds well, they to have, They have a bigger challenge and they don't have that little natural narcotic that's giving them that sense of well-being. So um, postpartum depression which is not, you know, you know, people used to think uh, postpartum depression meant I want to kill my baby. It doesn't really look like that. It really is a deep level of exhaustion, anxiety, overwhelm, yeah. um, apathy, and it can also often be insomnia. So there's so many things, feeling disconnected. Yeah. And most of it, I really believe, is hormonal. If you can fix the hormonal, then you can work with the social and the spiritual part of it. But um, it's very, very important to assess a woman fully in her first month or two after a birth. And if it's too late for you and it's four or five months, you can do that. Um, but what you want to look at is the hormone levels, a full thyroid panel, an adrenal panel, DHEA levels, cortisol levels, a full comprehensive metabolic panel, red and white blood cell panel, blood sugar, and then vitamin levels like the B vitamins and vitamin D. And you can have your OBGYN order all these tests for you. Um, 
what you going and so you you know really when a person comes out of their birth i like to rebuild and replenish them it's just as important as the care that you're giving the baby because remember yeah. the mother is the person giving the baby care and if she yeah. doesn't feel right then she doesn't get to give as much good care you know yes. so don't feel yeah. guilty about this ladies because yeah. it makes you a better mother the more rooted you are in your own self the more you have to give to the entire family as the emotional center of the household. And that's certainly um, why I was inspired to do this series and this episode in particular is to, to empower women to take care of themselves, knowing that it only benefits everybody in the long run. Um, and you had mentioned having your OBGYN order these tests, which is great. Um, but I wanted to, I was, I'm wondering, um, and I'm sure you can speak to this, in terms of what a Western medical physician is going to read on those as quote unquote normal, AKA not sick, <laughs> optimal. Um, those are gonna be two different um, modes of looking at blood work, right? From a naturopathic standpoint versus from a Western medical standpoint. So well, there's two yeah. main differences I see in the way MDs and naturopaths or holistic integrative doctors would look at labs. First of all, what's normal in labs is based on the average population. Right. And so a normal thyroid used to be this very um, small number, but people, more and more people have hypothyroidism now because of exposure to chlorine, fluoride, and radiation. And so what's considered normal in thyroid is much more lenient and large now. And so the, it's based on the average population and the average population is getting sicker. So a naturopathic or a holistic doctor is going to look more at a narrow functional range that they think is optimal, where it might show normal on your Western results. Yes, okay? yes, yes. Um, that's one thing to consider. The other thing is that medical doctors tend to look at the body of the car. And um, the body of the car can be perfect. There could be no rust, no dents, no chips on the paint, but maybe there's crud in the carburetor and there might not be gas in the tank or charge on the battery. So we don't look just at the body of the car with the, with the limited labs. We look at how the body's detoxing and how the body's energy systems are working. So you could be perfectly healthy to your medical doctor and you're saying, um, actually, I'm not okay. Yeah. And they're like, you're fine. And you're like, um, actually, I'm, I'm really not. Yeah. And But if we look deeper and we see that there's depletion in some of these energy systems or yeah. that there's toxicity, yes, we can see why somebody would be healthy but not operating well. And I'd say that's where 90% of new moms are. Yeah. Totally. They might be healthy, according to their doctor, but they're not operating well. Yeah. And then they're supposed to be not only taking care of, um, some of them are working, they have to take care of themselves, and then they have this new baby and a husband that's not getting the attention he thought he should be getting, <laughs> and it just goes from there, you yeah. know? Yeah, and, and I think that that brings up a really important part, point, which is that it's not about just not being sick. It's about fighting for the right to feel great, even as a mom, even as a new mom. And this connection to, which we talk a lot about on the show and, and with my students, obviously, this connection to your own inner teacher. And if your gut is saying, I don't feel right, yes. and the person in front of you is saying, but you're fine, and your gut is saying, I don't feel right, you're probably in need of some additional support and finding it is... Um, beneficial to everyone in your life yourself foremost but everyone in your life right oh yes and women who are mothers they always put themselves last and part of that is they're actually wired for that so high levels of estrogen and progesterone wire you to give 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 and get yeah. nothing back yeah those hormones wire you to have a veil over yourself of not even seeing your own needs. Yeah. To have your whole identity be based on who you take care of and who you love. Yeah. And so for a woman who's a mother to come to me and say, I don't feel good. Yeah. You know, it's bad. Yeah. And it's real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they don't usually put themselves yeah. in a place where they would assess that. Yes. And, um, you know, and, and I see this a lot where women are really struggling and they're hanging on by their fingernails. Yeah. And, you know, 
the one, I love the metaphor of the car because it's kind of like, yes, the body of the car is perfect, but no gas and no charge. So she can, she can sit in the driveway, she can do the local errands, but the cross country trip's not going to happen. Yeah, there's no endurance. Yeah. There's nothing extra. Yeah. And she just feels like she's running on empty, trying to meet everybody's needs, but doesn't have that full abundance to be able to do it and to do it with joy yeah because if you have very little inside of you it's very hard to share yeah. that and what i find the most is they'll feel guilty they feel guilty that they're not having a better time yeah this is the gift they always wanted they know they're lucky and blessed but they don't aren't in getting enough out of it usually that's a real physical depletion of nutrients of hormones of adrenals of thyroid and it can change your perception to feel balanced. Yes. Um, and I can just say firsthand, having worked with Dr. Francis um, through this, I remember when I got my first round of tests done after Isla was born, and Isla was like maybe, I don't know, three months old maybe. And I was like trying to feed her, trying to get my little pee test done, trying, and I was like, but I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And just like fighting for that little piece to give to myself and finding out the, how worth it it was on the other side because I do get to feel joyful most of the time with my girls and I do attribute it to the support system that I have in my life, in my life namely people like you. Um, and so for women who are trying to figure out how to do this, um, I, I could also put together a list of the labs great. that people can request from their doctors because I think sometimes that's helpful. Yeah. to go with that yes um and i and women really need to um exaggerate how how they feel because doctors don't really take women seriously a lot and you have to really say look i don't feel well or i want to be better and be very insistent yeah. because this is your body this is your health it's the health of your family and you have every right to get all these things checked out. Right, and I think it's an important thing too to note as I have been in this um, alternative medicine world for decades now, you can ask your doctor to get the tests and get the tests and listen to what your doctor has to say and then you have all of those labs to bring with you to a naturopath. Um, or a nutritionist or yes, there's uh, like medicine that. doctors now. Yeah. And there are medical doctors that use alternative medicines. Yes. So there's lots of people out there. Yes. Um, yeah. So would you talk a little, so I think we, I want to just make sure we hammer home this like, mom, you deserve to get a checkup, a check in. I was talking in one of the other episodes with um, Flora Cohen, who's a pelvic floor physical therapist. And she was saying how, you know, in, in France, getting a pelvic floor exam by a PT is just part of the standard of care for moms postnatally. Here we have to kind of fight for it. So this is kind of that same thing where like, it should be a standard of care that a woman who just gave her body over to grow another human being for a year has the right to get herself checked out to make sure that everything is where it needs to be um, so that both mom and baby can both be healthful. Um, well, so. The structural work is where you're so brilliant, Nicole, and I just love what you're doing with the, the yoga for this. And one thing that's important for women to understand is that while you're pregnant, your body's producing a hormone called relaxin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And relaxin weakens all the ligaments in your body so that your pelvis can get wider to hold the baby and also to deliver. So between weeks eight and 12 post-birth, yeah. the relaxin reabsorbs and all the ligaments tighten up again. So that's a very important time for a woman to get body work, get chiropractic yeah. care, to get aligned. And once she's aligned, do work with yoga and things like and Pilates and things like that that will help strengthen her and yeah. hold that alignment. Yeah. The other part of it is um, there's a treatment called the Mayan abdominal massage, and you know about that. And that's a, a technique that I learned in Central America from the Mayan curanderas and midwives. And they're the healers that work with the women. And the uterus hangs inside of your pelvis like a hammock. Any misalignment of the uh, pelvis could cause the uterus to go out of place. So post-birth, yeah. 
the uterus is never in the right place. Right. It, it was know, also very it. large and now it's getting very small. And in right. the process of doing that, it's not necessarily going to land in the perfect, happy, most upright spot. Exactly. And so typically what we see is if that's the bladder, normally the uterus stands behind it. But the uterus in uh, post-birth is usually folded forward and pushing on the bladder. That's why she has to pee all the time. Mm -hmm. It could be pushing backward on the colon and causing constipation. It could be flipped to the side. So I really believe post-birth, getting the uterus realigned, getting your body realigned, and then moving into PT, yoga, Pilates, yeah is a very good strategy for getting the body back in order yeah. and keeping it strong and also yeah. helping you if you ever wanted a second birth. Yes. Um, and now, so listen, mamas, what we're saying to you is not only get blood work, we're saying you also deserve these therapies, all of which Dr. Francis can do because she's just a, a miracle worker like that. Um, but there are That's certainly- you the website for the Mayan massage to find a practitioner near yes. you. Yes, and we'll, we'll have all of these links um, with the video also so that um, you can follow up. And uh, before we close today, Dr. Francis will tell us where you can find her and I'll tell you again where you can find me and we are here to support you. Um, I also wanna just talk briefly about diet in addition to this um, in terms of what mom is eating. Um, I, I know firsthand having been through this twice that it is the easiest thing to do as it will be for the duration of motherhood to eat the fastest thing you can produce and that just a little bit of forethought can go a long way to giving you nutrients that actually help sustain you versus riding on the crash roller coaster. Um, do you have some thoughts on kind of the first 40 days and what mama can can? Yes. So um, first of all, you always want to consider that the, what the baby wants from the breast milk is fat and protein. Yeah. Fat and protein are helping to build the nervous system and the immune system. A good amount of fat and protein also keep the baby's blood sugar balanced. Mm -hmm. The more balanced the baby's blood sugar, the less often they have to feed. Mm -hmm. And the less often the baby feeds, the more the woman's body can rejuvenate. The, the more protein and fat in the diet, the more balanced the mother feels, the less hungry. Yeah. And the easier it's going to be to lose weight because if she's picking on carbs, she's never going to be satisfied and she's going to be eating all day long and never really be able to cut off that weight. So what you always want to consider is that there's lots of small meals that are fat and protein with carbs layered on top of it, not just carbs only because you'll always be hungry. And so I always like women to really prep with food like hard boiled eggs, cheese, yogurt, um, meats, nuts, seeds. And so it, what, what would be good is to have your uh, partner help you prepare once a week yeah. a bunch of snacks that are easy to grab. Yeah. So I would look at like a hard boiled egg and a piece of sprouted grain toast. Or I would say like, have the yogurt there, throw in a little bit of muesli or granola, have some cottage cheese, or have cheese sticks available, or have hummus with gluten-free crackers, and have all of these snacks prepped yeah. so that you don't have to really think about it, because you get you think about how hungry you are, and you just grab for yeah. the easiest yeah. things, it's always carbs. Yeah. And, certainly and, if you're breastfeeding, yeah, and certainly if you're breastfeeding, when hunger comes, it comes like a freight train, and you are going to eat whatever is there because it's an emergent situation. So preparing those things ahead of time that you know you're gonna feel good about on multiple layers is, is, you know, and I think these are things that we all know, but especially if you're not quite there at the, if you haven't given birth yet, the, I find that those last few weeks when you're in the wondering zone of when baby's gonna come, is a great time to, to prepare some of these things. I really am a big proponent of freezing meals for those first, that first week, some sauces and things to make um, quick, uh, meals out of and just to get used to this routine of okay partner one of the ways that you are involved right now is by helping produce food and you know they're uh -huh. usually really happy to do that yes. because the baby yes. only wants the mother because of yes. the men. so they feel kind of left out of the yes. whole thing and men in particular are wired to provide and protect and they want to help 
Yeah. So yeah. I usually will assign the food and the snacks yeah. to them and make sure that they make it. And that just makes it so much easier for yeah. the new mother. And I think no matter how the family is made up, right? If it's two moms, if it's right. two dads, if it's two, somebody's in charge of feeding baby, and that is a full-time job to figure that out. Yes. And the other person being in charge of supporting that scenario, like you say, is a very clear full-time job that somebody can do. And when I'm meeting with my clients toward the end of the pregnancy, I usually meet with the spouse or the partner and have this conversation that like, you don't think it's important that she has a peanut butter sandwich waiting for her by the bedside table at 2 a.m. But oh my gosh, if that isn't like manna from heaven when you see that. Um, yeah. yeah, that's true love to a woman. To yes. Somebody's thinking about her. Yes. Yeah. Because and, we think about. I think that we always have to accept help because women in general don't want to be bothered. They kind of try to do everything by themselves, and this really was meant to be a village experience, as yeah. you know. And so I just be grateful for the help. Take it, and um, don't feel yeah. guilty about yes. it. Yes. Yes. And encourage it. Yes. And as it's amazing how fast time goes, I was just like, wow. Um, but, I, you know, in terms of what does all of this have to do with the spiritual practice, I think it is very clear that the goal of a yoga practice is joy, is to be connected to joy in our lives. And the motherhood experience can be an unbelievable source of joy. Without consciousness, it can also very easily default to this world of martyrdom because we are constantly doing for other people. And if we just give ourselves the practice of checking in with ourselves and asking what our own needs are and giving a little bit of space and time and energy, and we're talking about, you know, maybe an hour a week if you're, if you're planning a doctor's appointment for yourself, get it on the schedule, get it on the calendar. So you're giving yourself a little bit of energy so that then you have it to feel joyful, as Dr. Gabrielle was saying, not just get through it. Um, but to feel joyful and it's okay to be feeling both thrilled that you have this new life and also like you need something, <laughs> right? <laughs> Those two things can coexist. You can be grateful for this bundle of joy and overwhelmed by it at the exact same time, right? Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. What, like that, honey. Can you tell us, Dr. Abrella, where there's so much that we could keep talking about? Can you tell us where we can find you for more resources? And um, my website is the Urban Alchemist, H E R B A N Alchemist.com, and I'm located in Soho. My office number is 212 925 8772. But also, if people aren't local, I'm happy to help refer them to somebody else, and I'll give you a referral. Um, for the Mayan massage and the list of lab tests for people to request from their doctor. And it really is personalized. There isn't just a one size fits all for right. everybody. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, it should be customized for what's going on with her. But you deserve it, ladies. Yes, you deserve it, ladies. We're here to tell you. Tell your partners it was our fault. We told you to get out and go do all these tests. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you everybody so much for joining us. Dr. Gabriella is here. I am here um, on Yoga216. You can get to me there, um, yoga216.com or on Instagram, yoga216. We are here as always to be of service any way that we can. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back again next week with more um, yogi in your daily life goodness. Thank you, Dr. Gabriella. Thank you for being Honey, here. Thank you so much. Namaste. Nice to meet everyone. Bye bye.